Let's do problem number 31. The average gas prices for 30 gas stations in Florida for Thanksgiving weekend in 2014 was $2.09 with a standard deviation of 21 cents. The average gas prices for 26 gas stations in Florida for Thanksgiving weekend in 2015 was $2.36 with a standard deviation of 49 cents. At the 1% significance level, was the average gas price in Florida uh, for Thanksgiving weekend in 2014 less than in 2015? So it sounds like they're asking us to compare two means. So we're going to do a hypothesis test for two means. So before we do it, let's go ahead and carefully reread the question and write everything down. So we have two sets of data. We have 2014, and then we also have 2015. Okay, so for 2014, we have the average gas prices for 30 gas stations. That's our sample size. That's going to be N sub 1, and that's equal to 30. And it says was 209. So that's the average gas price. So the mean, right, the average gas price is 209. So X bar, that's the sample mean, is $2.09. And the standard deviation was 21 cents. That's going to be the sample standard deviation. And the reason we know that is because it never says population, right? It's implying that the standard deviation came from the 30 gas stations. So it must be the sample standard deviation. So they never give us the population standard deviation. That's important because this tells us we're going to use T in order to do this problem, right? If they give you the population standard deviation, you use Z. If they don't, you use T. All right, so now we can write down the 2015 data. Looks like 26, that's going to be our N sub 2. And we have uh, our mean here, X bar sub 2 is 236. And our standard deviation is 0.49, that's S sub 2, so 0.49. All right, so now we're ready. Oh, and a 1% significance level, so 1%. So alpha is the level of significance. That's 0 0.01. Okay, now we can finally go through and do the steps. So step one, let me use a different color just to mix it up. So step one is to identify the null and alternative hypotheses. So this will be HO, that's the null hypothesis, and H1 is the alternate hypothesis. So whenever you're doing um, a hypothesis test for two means, H sub zero is always the same, okay? It's always mu one equals mu two, no matter what, right? It's always that whenever it's two means. If it's two proportions, it's P one equals P two. So we want to know if the average gas price in Florida uh, in 2014 is less than 2015. So 2014, that would be mu one, so mu one less than mu two. Step two and three. So two and three are stat crunch steps. It wants the test statistic and the p-value. So let's go ahead and go to stat crunch and type everything in. So because they didn't give us the population standard deviation, we're going to use t for this problem. So you go to stat, t stats, and then we have two samples and then it's with summary. All right, so now we can type everything in. So the sample mean is 2.09. Be really careful in this step, you know, just take your time. Um, it's really easy to type all these numbers, especially when there's decimals. Um, I've made tons of mistakes, it's really easy to mess up. Sample mean is 2.36. Uh, sample standard deviation is 0 0.49. Sample size is 26. Let me just scan those over because I did that so fast. So sample mean, that's your X bar. Yep, sample standard deviation, that's your S. Sample size, that's your 30. And then now for the other data, the sample mean, 2.36. Yep, standard deviation looks good. And yep, everything looks good. Okay, that's a hypothesis test. Leave it at zero here. Uh, notice this, it's being subtracted, mu1 minus mu2. It's the same as what we have here. If you were to subtract these, you would get zero on one side. So just change this to less than, click compute. Boom, there it is. Their T stat, that's our test statistics. I'm just going to write T equals negative uh, 2.61. Um, I, oh, I think it wanted two decimals. Um, yeah. And then the P value, 
I wanted four decimals, I think, so 0 0.0068. All right, so those are step two and step three. Let me just check. Uh, that's what it said about decimals. Yeah, it, it did have directions on decimals. In fact, the previous problem did too, and I didn't even didn't even notice. Step four, decision about the null hypothesis. So if the p-value is smaller than your alpha, you reject. So if it's less than or equal to alpha, you reject. So in this case, it is. So we reject H0. So small reject, small reject. So if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, you reject H0. If it's bigger, you fail to reject. And step five is the interpretation. So let's do that. So five, let me use a, a different color. How about, ooh, how about this one? So we always start our interpretations by mentioning the significance level. So in this case, it's 1%. So at the 1% significance level, or I'll say level of significance, level of significance, and now we have to decide if there is or there is not sufficient evidence. So a really easy trick is whenever you reject, there is, fail to reject, there is not. So there is, that usually works. So there is sufficient evidence. It'll always work on all the problems we do. So there is sufficient evidence to claim that. We can say to support the claim that, it's a little bit better. So you always start with the level of significance like this. And then this part here is really key. Remember, if you reject, there is. Fail to reject, there is not. Sufficient evidence to claim that. And then just go to the last sentence. So I guess it would be here. The average gas price in Florida for Thanksgiving weekend in 2014 is less than in 2015. So that the average, I'll give myself some more room here, gas price in Florida, gas, price in Florida, I'll abbreviate it, for Thanksgiving, I'll save some, <laughs> save some, some writing, weekend, I want to abbreviate weekend, in 2014, uh, is less so let me make sure I, it's a correct sentence here, that the average gas price in Florida for Thanksgiving weekend 2014 is less than in 2015. And that would be the full solution. Kind of a long problem. These hypothesis tests uh, take a very long time to do. The reading, it's a lot of it's a lot of decimals, but it's not too bad. Like once you know how to do it, it's, it's not so bad. So um, yeah, that's it. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.